Today, I will teach you how to heal trauma. And I mean that. I know there's a lot of people who make all kinds of videos on trauma on YouTube. They don't actually know, most of them, what trauma is. I will define today what trauma is. I wrote everything down. This healing trauma is based on acceptance and commitment therapy. Me and millions of people have healed trauma with this practice. Today, I will explain to you what trauma is why you have trauma, and how to heal trauma, which is really, really, and this is really important, and you will understand this later when I explain it, it's really showing the brain how to make trauma inactive, that you don't care anymore about the trauma patterns like you used to care as a child. Let's get right into it. What is trauma? therapists, psychologists, throw that word around everywhere on the internet. When you were with them in the session, they're like, yeah, you have trauma. And you're like, okay, I have trauma. And you accept the, just that word, oh, trauma. We all know what trauma is. It's like this thing that comes from the past and it bothers me now. And because I have it in the past, somewhere I have to go to the past and fix it. Or somehow I have to talk with my therapist about it. And we have to constantly talk about it and spend time on it, which is actually very detrimental because your language, the language of the brain is behavior, which means your brain is looking at how you spent your time inside and outside of your head. So if you're in sessions constantly spending time on talking about the stories of the past, the brain's like, you love this. You love these stories. You love them because you're playing with them. You're playing with these toys that I've been giving you. So these must be important to you. The brain doesn't know that you hate it and that it prevents you from living your life in an amazing way. It doesn't know that. It only looks at what you engage with. And you're engaging with the thing, even though they're hating it. You're hating it. You're trying to fix feelings that come up. You're trying to fix panic attacks. You're trying to fix things. So your brain's like, oh, you love fixing. You love fixing these things. I see that you love fixing these things, so I need to give you more things to fix, more trauma. All right? So let's talk about what trauma actually is. Because most of your therapists and psychologists can't explain that to you. Trauma is not this thing that somewhere in the past, and we have to go through stories to the past and fix it because we can't actually go to the past. So if we can't go to the past and trauma was created in the past, where must trauma be? Trauma must come up in the present moment. And yes, it comes up when something is triggered, right? But how does trauma actually come up as? What is actually trauma? Trauma can only be three things, emotions, thoughts, and bodily sensations. This is pretty easy, right? Emotions, you feel anxiety comes up, you feel panic come up, you feel anger come up, you feel jealousy come up, you feel fear come up, you feel depression come up, that's emotions. Thoughts, you see memories coming up, you're getting visions, PTSD, what other things, you get thoughts coming up, you get entire stories coming up, you get memories, all those things coming up, right? Pretty easy. Number two, thoughts. Number three, bodily sensations. You sweat, you get cold, you you get panic, you <laughs> breathe fast, you, you, you get red. Pretty easy, right? Bodily sensations. These are the examples. Now, these things... Why are they coming up? And the reason is because you showed your brain back in the day that they are important safety mechanisms that you need. Now, these three things the brain actually uses to get your attention, to avoid the thing that you told the brain is dangerous. Give an example. Maybe in childhood you got bullied in school. Every time you went up in front of the class to talk, people threw paper balls, little kids threw paper balls at you, and they were laughing at you, and they're making fun of you. So 
in that moment, you as that little child, you couldn't handle it. So anxiety come up, sweating came up, and you told your brain, I never want to experience that again. I never want to be hurt like this again. This can be also with cheating, right? When you get betrayed by a person that's close to you, by a boyfriend, you tell your brain, I never want to experience that again. And your brain as your best friend is like, okay, I'll make sure that next time I see something, a dangerous situation like you had with that instant where you had to speak in front of the class or where you had to come close to someone in a relationship because that can inflict pain if that person um, betrays you, I will give you signals for you to react to so you avoid that thing. The brain gives you emotions, thoughts, and bodily sensations, not necessarily because they're logical. The brain gives you those things because it knows you will react to them. It's almost like, okay, what is Josh, Sarah, what are they reacting to? And your brain has an entire data bank from years, years and years and years and years and years, 20, 30, 40 years of what emotions and thoughts and bodily sensations you react to and you do compulsions around now, what is a compulsion? A compulsion is anything you do to try to control a feeling, a thought, or a bodily sensation. Maybe you avoid it. Maybe you're trying to check on it. Maybe you're trying to judge it. Anything you do with it is a compulsion, which then the brain got what it wanted. You are busy with fixing these feelings, and you're avoiding doing the thing that you want to do, but you deem as dangerous. Give you an example. Let's say you want to go to social events, but the brain gives you anxiety because back in the day, social events to you meant danger. It meant you getting bullied. So now the brain gives you anxiety and panic attacks because it knows you react to it. So you isolate yourself. You stay in bed, watch TikTok. You avoid the social events because of those emotions and thoughts the brain gives you. So the entire problem is that you're still reacting to these things. You're reacting to emotions and thoughts and bodily sensations because they're uncomfortable. You're trying to fix them. And the brain knows, oh, this is uncomfortable to you. And you are doing behaviors around it. If that's avoiding the situation, if that's chasing validation of another person, if that's trying to avoid to be embarrassed, trying to avoid to get hurt, trying to make sure you don't go crazy by researching on the internet, your symptoms, all of those things are behaviors around thoughts and emotions, stories that the brain gives you so you stay away from the danger, so you stay safe. So you might ask, I don't like trauma. Why does it keep coming up? And the reason is because you keep reacting to it. And you're like, but how can I not react to it? It's so intense. Of course, because the brain knows exactly what you react to. But our first step is to have the awareness that this trauma is not real. It's a pattern. It's something that used to be useful for you as the child to protect yourself. But now as the adult, it's the little child screaming the same things that it learned when it was a child. That it learned 7, 10 years, 20 years, 30, 40 years ago. So, whenever you listen to the child, you reactivate the child's trauma. Because you're spending time on it. So you're giving it righteousness. You're telling the brain that this must be true. This must be important. So the brain must continuously bring it up again and 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 again, again, again. And the reason why most people don't heal their trauma is because most people want relief from their trauma, from their emotions, thoughts, and bodily sensations. But that is a sure way to feed the trauma. So if you go to therapy and you are chasing relief from being identified with your trauma, 
and you constantly talking about the story, you spending time, you can get more depression, nothing changes, you get relief for several sessions, but overall, you don't grow because that quick relief becomes like an addiction where the brain is like, oh, you just got happy? You got happy because you um, vented in the therapy session and you talked about the story? I want you to be happy. How did you get happy? Oh, I gave you the trauma. The trauma came up. And by you venting, you got relief from it. So the only thing I have to do for you to be happy, to get the relief, is to give you more trauma. Isn't that crazy? On some point, it must make like, what? This makes so much sense. When I talk to my clients about this, right, and their specifics, the reason why it's over some time easy to convince them is because I don't really have to convince them. It's very logical. What I'm saying is very logical if you think about it. The brain will only keep bringing up what you use. So here's the key. How do we heal trauma? We don't heal it. We make it inactive by stop reacting to it. Now, what's happening if we don't react to it? There's uncomfortable emotions. So the only way to heal trauma, and you don't have to be perfect. We just want to take up more territory. Over time, you heal it. But the only way how to heal trauma is by being okay with uncomfortable emotions. But we don't stop there. That's nonsense. There's a lot of teachers and coaches out there, just sit with your feelings, just sit with your thoughts. That's nonsense, okay? Because you still keep your focused on those feelings and thoughts. We want to practice acceptance, which means we want to leave them alone. If you don't think acceptance is leaving something alone, think about this. When you're driving your car to go maybe from your home to your gym, are you accepting the trees that you're driving by? Are you accepting the lines in the middle of the street, the white lines? Or are you saying, I cannot drive on this road unless these lines have a different color. These lines, I'm going to stop my car. I'm not going to the gym. These lines need to change their color. The dividing lines in the street. I need to talk to the state. I need to talk to the city right now because they need to change the color. I cannot keep driving. Or I cannot keep driving until the clouds change their shape. You accept them. You accept that they're there. They're allowed to be there. And this is what I want your relationship with your emotions and thoughts and bodily sensations to be. But this is not where we stop. We need to now change our GPS from trying to actually fix the trauma, fix the feelings, fix the thoughts, fix, fix the bodily sensations to changing our GPS to the valued actions. You might be like, why actions? Why actions? Why, 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 why don't we do something with our feelings and thoughts? Because when you do something with your feelings and thoughts, your brain is giving you more excessive feelings and thoughts. But if you mindfully focus on the valued actions, while accepting any emotions and thoughts are there, not trying to fix them, let it burn, let it suffer, let them do what they want to do and you focus mindfully on growing the things you want to grow, like physical fitness, relaxation, creative expression, family, friends, relationships, romantic relationships, business slash money, and fun. These are values. These are the self values I use with my clients on the coaching calls and they uniquely feed these values with the valued actions. Physical fitness, maybe gym, meditation can be very good for your physical fitness as well. Um, gym, boxing, pilates, eating healthy, all of those things mindfully while not being reactive to the emotions and thoughts. Guess what's going to happen? Your intelligence of your body, your inherent intelligence will process this trauma. Your brain will understand, hey, Josh, for the last three months, I've been giving you the usual anxiety. You started to not react to it. So I was really worried about you. So I gave you more anxiety, more panic. You still didn't react to it. And you just kept going out with your friends and kept practicing sports and physical fitness and Usually you were scared to go out and hang out with friends, but you just shared yourself in a way that you value and you didn't chase validation anymore. You didn't try to chase, uh, try to get rid of embarrassment or hurt. You, you, I gave you the embarrassment and hurt to protect you, but you and the fear of abandonment that you get abandoned again if you get in a new relationship, but you just 
focused back mindfully on sharing yourself in a way that you value and focused on the valued actions of running, playing sports, building your business. Look, Josh, I'm a very efficient organ. I'm the brain. I'm a genius. What are you talking about? What are we even talking about here? If you don't use the things I'm giving you, I, I don't have time for this. I'm bougie. I'm one of the big, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the top G in the, in the, in the body. I'm one of the top Gs with the heart and other things. I mean, we all kind of important, but I'm fucking smart, sir. I don't have time for this, man. Okay? I'm going to just help you grow the business now because that seems like, and we're dropping the trauma thing. Do you guys understand? This should blow your mind. But a lot of people are going to be like, no, this is not what the old mental health industry has taught me in therapy. And I like to vent and get rid of the feelings. Okay, keep venting. You have that choice. Keep, keep trying to stay at home and say you have a mental health day by avoiding going out with your friends and fixing your anxiety by scrolling on TikTok. But guess what's happening? You're doing a compulsion. A compulsion and act therapy, like I said, is hurting your mental health. And you're feeding the anxiety. You will build more excessive anxiety. And by you avoiding your support systems, your valued actions, you are killing your support system, which is also causing depression. So this is what you do. You're making it inactive. And you don't have to be perfect. You just want to take up more territory. You don't have to be perfect, but you want to start in the beginning of the day because if you start your day when you wake up ruminating and spending time on any thoughts and emotions that come up, this is not only about the intense trauma, so to say, emotions and thoughts. This is about any kind of emotions and thoughts in the morning that come up. Oh, but what about your ex? You need to, fo why don't you ever have good relationships? Maybe you need to fix something. Maybe you need to fix this. Maybe you need to spend time in your head trying to guessing about it. And your brain's like, oh, you love this. If you talk back, you cannot control the thoughts that come inside of your head when you wake up in the morning, but you can control if you talk back. And again, like I talk in all of my videos, your focus is your superpower. You cannot control the thoughts to come in, but you can control with your focus if you talk back. And you can shift your focus to the valued actions in the moment. Great tool that I talked about in the last videos is talking out loud to your brain. No brain. We're walking right now. We're getting up right now. We're making food right now. No brain, we're driving right now. When you drive, you drive. When you work out, you work out. When you sing, you sing. When you talk, you talk. When you play, you play. When you talk to people, you talk to people. You don't spend time in your head trying to guess what they're thinking. This is a practice. But the more you take power back of your focus, the more you show your brain what you really care about. This is a practice. This is the only way. If you... The only way is to shift to being proactive instead of being reactive. If you stay reactive and you're trying to, you're talking back to the story that the brain gives you, that it knows you react to because it knows all the stories about abandonment, the ex, the jealousy, the betrayal, the you not being good enough. Also, the thoughts of not being good enough is not you. It is a pattern that the brain gives you for you to avoid doing your business, doing your podcast, doing your TikTok, whatever. That's why it's so important to build cognitive diffusion. Your therapist should have taught you in the first session what cognitive diffusion is. And most don't. All my, my clients come to me and they're like, no one taught me what cognitive diffusion is. It is crazy that your therapist doesn't teach you what cognitive diffusion is. The reason for that is cognitive diffusion is the differentiation between you and your brain. Between you and the thoughts, between you and the emotions. If you identify with the story, oh, I'm just a shy person, I'm an unworthy person, I'm a not confident person, you speak from that identity to your therapist, which means whatever you guys talk about, you identify it. There's no cognitive diffusion, which means you're speaking from the story, you're speaking from the regurgitation of thoughts that come from there till, since you've been a child. How can you escape that pattern if you speak from that pattern and you don't even know that you're not your thoughts and your emotions? I'm not saying fire a therapist right away, just ask them. Can you explain to me what cognitive diffusion is? 
Can you explain to me that I'm not my thoughts, that I'm not my emotions? Can you explain to me how to shift my focus, how to practice that? Can we stop constantly talking about the story? And you stop constantly giving me validation for the feelings. And can, we, can you give me tools, therapist? Because I come here every week, nothing changes in my life. Can you give me tools? I want to practice. When you come to that point where you say, I don't just go to therapy to fix feelings, to chase happiness, to chase a certain feeling. I go to therapy to practice. Yes, to get a perspective, to get an understanding about myself. That's also important. I'm not saying it is not. But what's left out completely in most therapies is the practice. And that's like saying... You have a tennis coach who only learned books about playing tennis, but they never played tennis. Would you trust them? That's most therapists. That's most therapists. They regurgitate things that they learned in university. You put them on a pedestal because they have a piece of paper on the wall where they learned long enough, like 50 cents says, to pass their midterms. And now they regurgitate outdated information but they have no idea how to change their own brain because they don't practice mental health tools like silent meditation, not guided meditation. Everybody can do a guided meditation. It's good for you. It's good for your body. But a silent meditation to be able to sit down with any emotions and thoughts and focus on your breath for 30 minutes, 45 minutes, for an hour, which trains mental focus and emotional fitness. If your therapist is not doing that, I don't want that. I don't want that guy. I don't want that girl. I don't pay that person. They should give you the tools that they practice. They should give you mental health tools. So trauma and any patterns, whatever definitions you give those things, is based on making them inactive. And that is based on making something else active, which is bringing your focus back to the valued actions. If you want to learn more about the value garden exercise, which was created by Mark Freeman, I put a spin on it because I brought the seven value points in it for people to focus in an easier way. Check out my other videos. You will find it in the How to Heal Heartbreak video. There's a great animation of the value garden. You could also do one-on-one -on -one coaching with me or my courses. If you don't can't afford one-on-one -on -one coaching, no problem. In my video courses, you'll find the value garden exercise as well. So you have enough resources. Now, how to start practicing that? Think of the trauma patterns when they come up, since they're so intense for you, as 400 pounds in the gym. Maybe you're not able to press 400 pounds yet, but your good news is all emotions are connected. All emotional fitness is connected, which means you can start to practice with uncomfortable emotions that you already can practice with. I'll give you an example. If you wake up and the brain gives you an urge of, gives you feelings of boredom and uneasiness, which is like, let's say 20 pounds. And you want to fix it. You want to fix the feeling. You're like, oh, I don't like this feeling. Let me scroll on social media. You just built emotional weakness with only 20 pounds. You could build emotional fitness with 20 pounds by being okay with the feeling of boredom. You already set the day before proactively said, hey, I'm going to the gym right away. First thing in the day, oh, I can have this boredom. I don't fix it with the phone now. I can have this uncomfortable urge and I focus mindfully on walking now outside the door to go to the gym. And you practice that mindfulness during the day. It's actually doing less work in your head. Over time, it gets easier. But in the beginning, the brain's not going to like it because the brain's like, you are not doing the safety mechanism we talked about. Let me give you more uncomfortable feelings and thoughts. Expect it to get more uncomfortable. But this is the only way. And guess what? Over time, everything gets easier. You, because you get stronger, everything gets lighter. And you get more composed. You get more calm. But that's why it's a practice. Like the gym is a practice. If you say to your personal trainer, hey, I know I've just been here for today, but can I get some six pack? Can I get some eight pack? Can I get like buff? Can I get 20 pounds of muscle right now? He's going to look at you, what the fuck are you talking about? You need to continuously practice this. You don't have to be perfect. You can have some cheat days sometimes, eating pizza and all that. 
but we want to take up more territory. And this is the exact same thing. You want to take up more territory inside of your head and outside of your head. Because you can still feed the trauma patterns, even if you do the actions, if you still spend time when the thoughts come in, on them with your focus. That's why you want to practice keeping your focus outside on the valued actions. So you practice it by setting the actions from your value garden, the things you want to grow, especially also the things that you are scared of, where there's anxiety, maybe you want to go to a boxing class, but there's uncertainty, have the uncertainty on go. Don't wait on the right feeling. The brain will always give you the wrong feeling if you wait on the right feeling. Learn to do things with wrong feelings and you will learn how to trust yourself. This is something that Mark Freeman says too. Learn to do things with wrong feelings. This is also very helpful in meditation. If you sit down in meditation and the brain says, you don't even know if you're doing this right, go yeah, brain, I love doing things wrong. You're not playing the brain's game in that moment. You're coming back to your breath, all right? Silent meditation. I made videos about that as well, right? See me on my Instagram, see me on YouTube. It's such a great practice to make trauma patterns inactive because those uncomfortable emotions come up also during the meditation. And you focus on your breath. You don't try to fix those emotions and patience will come up. The brain will say, no, what are we supposed to do later? And you're like, no, brain, the thoughts are allowed to be there, but you bring your focus back to your breath or your body. And over time, let it burn. You build more emotional fitness. So this was the video on trauma. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Follow, subscribe, whatever you can do. Engage with the algorithm. If you like me, support me. I love you guys. Have a good night.